Name, I'm Arnaud Giuliani. I'm the creator and lead developer of Coin Project, the open source project uh, um, dependency injection for Kotlin. I'm also a GD for Kotlin. And if you want to ask me questions, of course, you can reach me on Twitter. Um, for this talk, I would like to share with you some recipes uh, with Coin. Coin is a framework that uh, target to make dependency injection easy to use and super uh, really natural to, way to, to add to your, to your application. But for some classical architecture, I believe that uh, in, uh, in articles, in all the resources around, there's no much uh, guidelines for you. Then today I would like to, to, uh, to give some basic guideline on uh, Android architecture, multi-platform architecture also with Kotlin. Before diving into this topic, I would like just to come back for some core concept about uh, Coin and how is it working. Uh, as a dependency injection framework, the idea of Coin is let you describe how you want to assemble things in your application and then Coin uh, let you inject all your dependencies in your application. For example, if we have two classes, here, class A, class B, then we can describe with this uh, DSL. That means DSL is a, it's um, keywords that we add to Kotlin um, to let um, enhance the, the current uh, language. And then we can add just a few keywords to describe uh, the content of a coin application. And here, module is the first keyword where we declare a module. And then we will declare definition inside single to mean that we want unique instance in our, in our container. And then we want to declare both components, class A, class B, uh, in this way. Uh, this means this, this is the main keyword, single here. And you see that we are using functions to declare things. This will be functions that we build your application by calling your uh, class constructor. All of this is pure Kotlin. And then you see that for class B, there is missing something. That means that when I call this constructor, I need to fill class B with the dependency. And this is the idea of coin is that it's just a few keywords to let you declare everything for you. And then you, you have to know at least three keywords, module, single, and get. Get is the, is the function to ask coin to retrieve your dependency for you. Then, to declare two components and one dependency from class B to A, this is the way to go, class B with the get function in constructor. This way, your configuration file, you know, the, 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 the space where you declare a module and everything is outside of your main components. It's a configuration file. You see that everything you can do here is constructor injection. And all the instance will be built by the coin container. By, your, by, by coin itself. On the other way, the other mechanism to retrieve dependency is to let a current existing class retrieve a dependency from coin container. And the way to do that is um, using the coin component interface. And then this coin component interface allow us to use the inject uh, function that means that in Kotlin, we can have extension function. Extension function is function that can uh, that come in your classes as the way you, you would have written it in your, in your source code. But then just by using this coin component interface, you unlock the magic of coin. That means that you have access to inject. And then when you make, the, you make your instance of uh, my app class here, you can have access of class B field here. The difference with the previous uh, example is that my app class is not created by coin. This is a case where you are bootstrapping uh, your, your dependency inside something that is ex existing outside of coin. 
and then uh, Coin allow you to retrieve any dependency just by giving you access to an API, the inject function. And this magic will be very useful in Android because then in Android, we will be able to access dependency from the Android components that we can't create by ourselves because this is created by the Android operating system. And this is why we have two kind of uh, sides. We have two sides of coin, the configuration DSL and the injection API uh, when you need to retrieve it somewhere uh, in other um, uh, runtime SDK. We will firstly focus on Android use cases uh, with the classical MVP and MVVM uh, building. Um, and this approach is, um, is done around the Android architecture blueprints. I don't know if you know this uh, project, but this, this is a project uh, made by Googlers and uh, Google uh, uh, experts. And then the idea of this project, the architecture sample project is to gather um, best practices and where you can write uh, Android application with different kind of uh, architecture. Then you have any kind of declination uh, inside uh, this project. And you have the current Android architecture sample. Uh, you are here and you have we have forked this project on the coin organization side. If you want all the, the source code, you will see here. But the idea, the basic idea of this is having a basic application and then trying to decline uh, to to um, to get around many kind of architecture and also a way to set up a DI. This basic application is a to-do application. It's a super funky application where you have a main screen with one uh, floating action button that let you add a to-do. To-do is just a, a sticky note where you can add things to do course. But the basic idea is to have a simple overview of the, this application and not to be um, uh, overwhelmed by complexity of the application as we want to have several kind of architecture. But let's see this application. We have just a task activity here. We will have a task view model for the, uh, the UI logic and then we will have task repository to begin to play with the data sources, a remote, a remote and a local one. And then, because we are a bit crazy, we will use a local database. And then this is the big picture of this application. The idea is to say, okay, I have those components. I, wa I want to bind them and assemble them. I need a dependency injection framework. Uh, since Coin3.x, uh, you only need one Gradle package to unlock most of the Android feature. Then the only package, the main package you, you have to use is the Coin uh, Android package. And you, it will include all the view model, the scope, and the fragment features for you. Let's go. And what we will see here is pair components. We will describe how we can declare them is the, in the configuration DSL. The first component we want to declare is uh, the task remote data source. It's a class that is explaining the interface, uh, interface task data source. And then in coin, you will just have this line to declare it single of the given type and the function uh, that build task remote data source class. We put in what we call in Kotlin the infer type uh, directly just uh, after the single keyword to uh, enforce the definition to bind this task data source type. If we have two components to declare and you will see that here uh, troubles uh, start as we have two components uh, that are implementing the same contracts here. This is task data source, but we have a local one that is using database. And then we have a remote one that will use a remote API. And then at the beginning, we will declare those two definitions with two lines like this one you are, you are seeing. We fill in the function, any dependency with the get functions, but this is not enough. As we may, we must make the difference between those two definitions and 
The basics to do that is to give them a label, a qualifier. Then we use the function name to give the, a label to each uh, to each um, definition, and then we can make the difference without having to know the implementation of the components. We can make the difference between local DS that will target task local data source classes, and then remote DS that will target the other class. Then we go, we will declare a task repository that is using those two data sources. And then what we do is use, we use single of task repository, the contract, and then we declare a function where we instantiate default task repository, and then we fill with the dependency, get, get, get. And at this time, we need to target a different kind of component uh, implementation, then we use here the, the qualifiers. We have our two data sources. We have our repository behind the local data sources. We need to, we need to use the room API. And um, as coin is a Kotlin DSL, it's pure Kotlin. Then behind the single and the block code here, you can run any kind of Kotlin code. This is compiling directly in your application. Then uh, you can write any kind of uh, Kotlin expression that may result in, a, in an instance. And then we can use it for, for to, to setting up a room instance, a room database instance, and then you see room database builder. And then one thing here is that we, we need the Android context from coin. And then we have a special keyword here, a special function. It's the Android key, uh, context function that let us retrieve the Android context from coin. And then we can build our room database directly with this line of expression. And then we build this instance. The easy thing behind is that we can retrieve this room database and then we can extract any reference to any DAO, uh, DAO um, component uh, in room. I don't know if you, 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 know, you know well the framework, but room, uh, expose a database component, and then you have a DIO component that are interfaces that exposes operations on each kind of entity. And then you can access the current uh, to-do database entity from coin and then uh, run a function, and then we, we, can, uh, we can hold uh, the entity for you. We have declared all the let's say the most complex part as this is uh, wiring the data layers. What we have to do now is uh, get up all those components inside our view model to do with the UI logic. Then <clears throat> there is a special keyword in coin that is view model. We have seen single for to keep a single ton instance, a single unique instance. And then here we have a view model instance we declare view model and then a function to build our task view model here. And this special keyword will allow us to declare a view model and then coin will bind it to your Android lifecycle component. And then all the magic is done for you. You don't have to declare anything else. Everything is ready. You just have to use it in your UI. In terms of UI, the only thing that you have to write outside of your coin configuration now, it just declare your view model field, your, your view model property and use by view model uh, function. And then you have a, a, a delegate to use and retrieve your dependency of view model. And then this view model will retrieve all the other dependency behind. You see that in Android, finally, you, you have nothing to do in the uh, Android components because it's just by view model and everything is already out of the box ready for you as um, coin-android uh, package is already providing all the Kotlin extensions for you. If we are more in a MVP uh, architecture style, that means that we are switching for a view model component for the logic, the UI logic to a, a presenter component, it will be not much complex as finally our presenter will be something like that, a class that is uh, targeting our task repository class. And then uh, we may have a link to the uh, contract. That means that 
the interest of MVP is having a link to the UI without having the, the detail. That means that task view here is just a contract. We don't ha want to have, to have a, a link directly on the activity or fragment behind. And then how we do that in coin, because finally we want to declare, we will declare a function that is building the, the, the presenter instance directly. What we can do then is declare a factory instance. That means it won't hold the instance as a unique instance for you. It will be a new instance each time you, you, want, uh, you, you want a new instance. But also as we are using Kotlin function, we can pass argument down your definition building, and then you can you we can provide the um, the view parameter here uh, at left to your to your um, task presenter instance. That means that on the UI side we will be able to pass um, an argument, and then this will be a dynamic injection. We call it a parameter injection. We can inject parameter and then resolve and build the definitions. And this is really useful because then on the UI side, what we can do is use by inject, that is the standard way to inject things uh, in coin. We don't use by view model is the standard way to inject by view model, but to, to inject anything else in coin, you just use by inject. And behind by inject expression, we are opening uh, brackets and with a code block, and then we are using parameters of function that will list all the parameters that you want to pass to your dependencies. And you see it's really usable, and then finally it's targeting this, and this will be the task view that we want to pass to our definition. Fairly easy to write and also fairly easy to read in terms of configuration. If we look back all the configuration we have written in one module, here you see that we can declare one field, the app module, and then we can declare everything inside. Coin doesn't block you in terms of design. It's, it's, uh, this tool is here to support you in the way to declare things up to you to organize yourself in the way you want. But here you see that we have declared the view model, the factory of the presenter, and then the task repository, the data sources, and then the room layer for the local database. In terms of modules, then you are not constrained to anything. The only thing that needs to be um, to be very to be sure is that all your components uh, can find uh, definitions to be retrieved. Uh, you can. You can have tools. You have tools in Coin that let you verify any configuration or bunch of modules to be sure you don't miss any any uh, definition inside. This is what we call the check modules API. This is in Coin test module. But you organize yourself in the way you want by layers, by feature, in the way that allow you to work in the way you want. There is no no constraint here. This way, you declare a module just in a, in a variable. And then if you want to uh, list uh, multiple uh, modules uh, between them, you can just use the plus operator that is taking all your modules and making it in a, in a list. And then the only thing you have to do is in your, in your application entry point is use start coin to start your container and then just uh, use the modules function and then you get, uh, you can run the list of modules you, you want to, to run. Let's go a bit deeper in terms of architecture, especially in the Android ecosystem, uh, people are kind of the clean architecture and uh, depending on your need to declare or to specify or to split, to isolate all your business rules, then you need an extra layer in terms of uh, logical architecture that will result in having your business rule inside. That means that in our big picture, in the to do not application, what we want to do is having a component dedicated to one business rule or to several business rules. And then we will have an extra layer between our repository and our view model. We'll see that it's not complex to, to, to update for our coin configuration. Here we are using our view model. We don't target 
any more the repository directly, but the, the get task use case then. We declare it in our view with our view model keyword. And then the task use case that is called by the view model is declared as, as a factory. That means that when the view model will need an instance, then coin will create it and give it to the view model, and then we will resolve everything uh, in line. And you see that we just need a factory to declare this component, and then we go with all the other components inside the application. Then we just add an extra definition here, a factory definition for the get task use case. Pretty lots to, to show to the screen. Um, let's wrap up what we have seen in terms of the architecture definition and design for with coin. For the presentation layer, just use factory for presenter, view model keyword if you have a view model. For all the layer behind, if you need really uh, instances that need to be kept over the time for your application, then unique instances, then you can use the single uh, definition keyword. On the Android world, when you need to retrieve dependency outside of coin container, you just need a coin API, then use by inject or by view model. If we have an intermediate layer that is tied to the logical layer, then we will use factory keyword to have something that is tied to the task presenter and view model lifecycle. And then we just need a factory keyword. In terms of logical uh, view of this, you see that uh, all the data layers, repository data layer, uh, are declared in single uh, use case interactor factory and logical view, view with the uh, logical component with factory and view model. It's time, as we are dealing in the bleeding edge of component I've lifecycle to talk about scope, and usually people are a bit scared about this. Uh, yeah, why do we need scope? Because it can be a complex topic. And a scope is, is the space of memory where we need to keep the same in space, the same instances for, the, for a specific amount of time. In, in clear, what does it mean? That means that, for example, for Android, we need to maintain the same bunch of components for a given Android component, and then it's a Android lifecycle. Naturally, as we have seen, we can follow the Android component lifecycle without to do anything really complex. And the only thing to do, for example, with the presenter is just here declare this my presenter class directly as a factory. Why? Because finally, we will have an instance of my activity uh, view in Android. Then we create coin, create this instance of my presenter, give it to my activity. And when we have any kind of configuration change, then Android is dropping my activity and my presenter, recreate my activity, and then ask again a new instance to coin. This is why, finally, this kind of configuration, the MVP presenter here, won't survive to any kind of configuration change. If we want to use Android scope, what does it mean? That means that, for example, we can introduce another component, my adapter, that is uh, having the dependency of uh, the presenter. The idea of using a scope here is having the same my presenter component injected in my adapter and in my activity. In without a scope, you couldn't have that because then coin would inject a new instance uh, each time. What you may see here is that we are using a special class, the scope activity class, uh, that is a utility class from coin to help you set up directly uh, um, a binding on current scope. How you declare a special scope space in coin, it's really easy. You just uh, write scope of the given type, open bracket to declare scoped definitions. And you see, uh, fairly easy to, to, to describe. Everything is okay. You have the same instance of my presenter in, in my adapter and my activity. But in terms of lifecycle, if my activity is dropping, 
then uh, the system is uh, killing uh, my activity um, instance, then it will drop also my presenter and my adapter. Why? Because we, the, the scope is not, uh, is not surviving to any kind of configuration change. For this, you need a view model. The view model, as you remember, is a, one of the architecture components introduced in 2018 in Google API to, uh, to uh, target this, this need of change. For us, it's super easy to declare a view model in coin because finally you just declare it with the view, um, view model keyword and then use by view model API just to retrieve it in your activity. You don't have to care about any kind of scope requirement. And then, if you want things to survive to configuration, you have my view model will be will not be recreated as my activity is dropped, then recreated. Then we have a new instance of my activity class, but not for the the my view model class as it's following the same uh, the same life cycle. If you want to mix a view model, uh, let's say that you want to hold instance in a scope and uh, behave like a, uh, a view model scope, something that is really uh, living longer than a, a regular uh, uh, activity or fragment scope, what you, can use, what you can do is override the scope property here. If you use scope activity class, but we will see that you, do, you are not forced to use scope activity class to use scope, activity, uh, scope in, an, in coin. You can, you can use an interface. But the idea is that you have to override your scope default uh, property to use the activity retained scope. And this will be something that will be back up with view model for you just behind uh, under the hood. The other special case that will need uh, that you will need is uh, to bind a view model to the navigation graph. Your navigation graph is surviving your application, and you may have and want to retrieve the same view model over your application and be tied to these navigation rules. And this is what we have in Coin X navigation module. And this way, you declare a view, uh, a view model, a standard view model, but in the UI, you can use coin knife graph view model function with the idea of your knife graph and then you are binding your view model to uh, the knife graph and then you can retrieve the same view model uh, for this uh, navigation graph. Quite interesting and uh, it's another kind of uh, scope, special scope here. I propose to wrap up as a scope are a bit complex. Um, if you really need to use a scope, always think twice beca because you, you can open something that can be complex in terms of design. But as you see, you can have simple view model or presenter that follow themselves your life cycle directly. But if you want things like scope, then you just need a scope uh, um, a section with your scope definition inside. And when you want to use this scope, you just have to use either the scope activity class or scope fragment. Either if you want, if you don't want to use the uh, scope utils class from coin, you can use directly just the uh, Android scope component, just an interface, where by default you will set up an activity scope, and then you can uh, rework the scope you want to to play with. If you are kind of an adventurer, I want to uh, dig into the scope API. You can access the scope API directly with get scope, uh, get coin from any uh, Android uh, component, and then use the create get scope uh, functions. And on your scope instance, you can resolve any kind of component uh, you want. Uh, you want. And to finish, the famous coin navgraph view model to bind your view model to your navigation graph. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's good thing. Uh, this is the big picture of our application uh, architecture, uh, and you see that the scope layer can be tied to the presentation layer, as in our big picture, uh, in the same place as factory or view model layer, you will have the scope layer that is representing 
UI logic uh, place for components. One of my advice is to say, keep your configuration simple. Coin has been made to make your life simple and make things simple, then keep it super simple. And uh, one famous quote from Chetaz, less quad equals less bugs. It's time to talk about new architecture. And those days we have funny things uh, that come out like uh, Jetpack Compose. I believe uh, people are crazy about Jetpack Compose those days. Uh, you can see Twitter feeds of anything about Jetpack Compose. And uh, Coin offer a package, a dedicated package for Jetpack Compose. It's called Coin Android X Compose. And then what it allows you is to inject things inside your composable functions. Then inside a composable, you can have get of your of your dependency or by inject of your your dependency. One good practice is to have your dependency as a parameter of your function and have a default value filled with a get. Uh, in this way, your parameter will be filled by default with coin and you can you you can use uh, you can use it in in a, in a testing purpose and then fill it with the value that you want. Then you are not blocked with coin in this way to write uh, your your composable. In the other component that you may want to inject is the view model inside the composable. In the same way, we have get view model by view model, and also the same advice is to keep things in parameters in order. To, uh, to have the, the opportunity either just to use coin by default, either to inject a value that you want to bring manually uh, in other case. I believe uh, dependent injection in Compose is quite also opening new doors, then there is new fields uh, to, uh, to check. And uh, we have begun to fork uh, the Compose samples uh, project uh, from the Google team, then uh, we will, you can find all the, our samples here uh, if you want. Um, let's talk about dependency injection for Coltin multi-platform. It's another really trendy topic uh, for the mobile side. Then as we have seen MVP, MVVM top, uh, architecture, how does it differ making a coin dependency injection with coin? from an Android app to a multi-platform app. We, this is the key MM slash key MP topic where we are focusing more on the mobile uh, multi-platform side of Kotlin. And the idea of that is finally having the possibility to work with your native technology, but reuse all the components, all the logical and business comp uh, components behind. The idea is to share all the components that are in the red zone here, where uh, you have repository, data sources, database, perhaps presentation uh, components, if you can, depend if you are using coroutines or not. I like to play uh, with the people in space, people in space uh, uh, project samples. It's one from January, also a GD in Kotlin is making lots of uh, interesting uh, key MP sample application. And then uh, in this one, you, you can find lots of things like uh, is uh, dealing with uh, desktop, compose, web. Then uh, it's, uh, it's really fun to, to, to see what John is dealing with uh, key MP. But it's also a good demonstration here as uh, John is using coin in all its, uh, its uh, sample application. And the people in space application, it's a mobile application for the ISS uh, space station where you, it's listing people inside and then putting on the map where the station is around the, the earth. Then uh, quite interesting use case. And if you check out the project, you will have this kind of uh, folders where you see app folder for the Android app, the common uh, shared folder, iOS app and then backend web and other uh, application uh, folders. We will focus just on Android and iOS app. If we open the common main uh, application, you will see 
what we can do in terms of DI and um, shared common component with Kotlin multi-platform. And as Coin is a pure Kotlin framework, it means that you can still declare your modules like, like you were you are just using normal standard Kotlin. And then you can declare everything around that is using Kotlin and Kotlin multi-platform uh, framework like uh, JSON uh, serialization, uh, Kator client, other components that we can write by hand, logging, et cetera, et cetera. Then it's pure coin configuration. Then it's, de it's declaring everything for you and you can inject it in your native application. And there's still some case where you need to provide um, uh, detailed implementation uh, for Kotlin multi-platform is the case where you need to set up platform-specific code. And how you can do that with Coin, the interesting way uh, to do that is having your common definition, but also having um, a platform-specific uh, configuration. And how you can do that is done just using the expect keyword uh, before declaring your platform module. You see its function here. And then you can uh, declare it in each platform you need it. And then it's really convenient because in this way, then we can have the GVM, uh, GDBC uh, SQL, SQLite driver, and also the native iOS SQLite driver, and et cetera, et cetera. Then you see that it's super convenient to keep uh, making GI and then having the, the hand on um, the, shared, uh, the shared component like this. And finally, uh, how you bind it in Android, you just depend on your Gradle module, the shared command one, and you just ask, you just uh, put the common module inside the list of modules you want to load inside your coin application, and then you just fill the dependency with the model, and you're done. And then you're gone, uh, you're done with your your common code and your Android application. For iOS side, uh, I don't have uh, details here, but you you will have to wrap up things a bit in your uh, view model side. Uh, but you still you still can use directly the instance of coin uh, from the DI. Is the, the, just the limitation is that you can't use directly the extensions. Then you need to have proper component that you will have to create inside iOS and then inject things inside. Um, in terms of vision, that means that with the coin dependency injection framework, you can still declare all your presentation at the limit of the presentation layer, but all your repository data sources, database, and business logic layers, and then reuse them with your native application. Um, I've also written just an Hello KMP project with coin that is the, is the minimal, minimal, minimal Hello World application that you can find on uh, KMP, it's just saying hello in the iOS application, but this is a good start to say to understand where you can begin to set up coin and then um, having the, the basics to start with. It's time also to talk about new features uh, that are coming in coin those days. Uh, and one of these is a new feature proposal that is uh, that has been raised uh, since the beginning of the year. And it's not anymore a proposal because finally the, 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 the proposal is now stable. Um, this proposal, uh, we were targeting the limits of Coin DSL. A DSL, fin finally, a Kotlin DSL, you can declare things and everything is resolved dynamically uh, while you, we are running the, the, the code, the Kotlin code, but we can't really guess anything and what's going on because we don't want to, to do any kind of introspection or heavy uh, metaprogramming operation at runtime. But with the Kotlin ecosystem, we have a really interesting door that is called the Kotlin compiler plugin. That means that we can begin to provide things and feature at the compiler uh, stage. What does it mean? Does it mean that we can begin to analyze things in a super fast way and then understand and perhaps anticipate things for you. Um, 
then we begin to I begin to work on Google Key SP. Uh, it's um, uh, a project that is uh, providing annotation processing, but at Kotlin compiler stage. And the idea is to analyze all your code, and then we can generate coin for you, generate coin definition for you. Then the idea of this would, is to even minimize what you have to write, and then we can continue to enhance your productivity uh, in terms of development. The idea also is to keep the coin semantic, the idea, the philosophy, and then to use it, uh, um, you have two dependencies to use these uh, coin annotations and use the plugin, the key SP plugin to use a coin key SP compiler project. And a perfect sample to, to demonstrate how it goes is to, to go back to our famous to-do application and to show you how finally, what finally you have to write in terms of annotation compared to the DSL. Um, let's start with the task remote data source. Then what we just need to do is just tag it at single. Um, the, if we have two data sources here, we just tag them at single. And as we want to make uh, to add them some label, we just add at name of it. And we don't have anything else to write, just making at single, it will generate the, the declaration in coin and then you can start it and then you, you, you can go with that. Task repository, the same, just we, we write add single and everything behind will be okay. But we need to say to, to coin that we need a dependency with the given uh, qualifiers, then we add named, but fairly easy to write. On the view model, we, we put add coin view model on it, and then it will declare the view model definition for you. And Finally, in the Android side, nothing changed. As finally, this is the same API that is using Coin. We will, uh, with Coin KSP compiler, we just generate things for you on the configuration, but then the API is still the same. For the task presenter definition, uh, we want the task repository, then nothing to do here in the constructor, but we want to say this parameter will be injected. And then we tag it at injected param here. And then in our UI, then the same as previous, then we just uh, write by inject parameters of this. Then fairly easy. Uh, you see that finally we keep the same semantics that uh, instead of writing single in the DSL, you write at single. In, and then we have add factory, add coin view model, and then you use it in the current coin API thing. Then it's really uh, an interesting uh, way to, to declare definition really, really quickly. Modules also is really, uh, it's interesting uh, in the way that um, to declare a module, you need to tag a class, but nothing fancy to do here. Just it can be an empty class like this class app module, just tag it at module on it. And to gather definitions uh, and uh, inside this module, what you, you can do is tag it with add component scan, and then we will scan all the annotation from the given packages, and then we will assemble them in your in this module. Um, what finally is generating uh, Google Key SP or, or KSP compi compiler is an extension on your class module. And then the only thing that you, that you have to do is run app module the constructor and then you run the dot module extension. This is the only thing that is generated for you. And then you can freely mix DSL or uh, annotating, uh, annotation module if you want. Up to you to use whatever you want. There are no, no restriction here uh, as finally we are running coin uh, with, the, with the modules. You can also in a module, you can have a function to um, declare uh, a component. That means that we have a function task yao here that is using a, um, a dependency uh, to do database. And then we can declare a new component. And this way, this function is returning a new instance and we just tag it at single and then it will produce a single instance of this task yao component. Then 
it's Kotlin compiler plugin. It's making code generation. The idea is not reproduce what other solution could do, but the idea is to really improve the developer experience and open the way that uh, you can declare definition coin with uh, this an annotation uh, with annotations. And the idea is to keep to keep it super fast, like our benchmark for now is for a, uh, a project that is using uh, 1,000 uh, components, uh, tagged 1,000 components, it takes around two seconds in your compilation time. Then it's still really fast and then doesn't impact your, your, your project much than that. It's really easy to debug also because finally, there is only one way where your 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 dependency is created. It's created in your uh, DSL. It's the generated DSL. Then you can debug it. It's pure Kotlin, and then um, uh, you can understand where finally all your components are used in the DSL in the, in the configuration, and choose the best. Choose what suits for you and really what you need. There is no constraint. You can use both DSL and annotation, or you can use only annotation or DSL. The idea is not to replace DSL with annotation, this is just to use another uh, uh, way to declare um, coin. The project is uh, available in the insert coin.io GitHub organization under the project coin annotations. And then you're done. I believe we are in the last <laughs> slides of my talk. Uh, then, what's going on with coin? Um, we've seen really incredible uh, increase of download volumes uh, and websites, uh, the documentation website uh, visits are really uh, getting uh, big trends like uh, 10 times in two years. Then uh, things are really, really uh, getting strong in terms of downloads, in terms of usage in, uh, in, the, in the Android community. Then for us, in terms of developers, it's really forced us to have a mindset of professional way to organize roadmap features. And then also because we are uh, behind technology like Kotlin language, Android, and then all those frameworks uh, are releasing uh, new things like every six months, then we need a structure release, right, a release uh, cycle. And then we need to separate clearly tracks like fixed version, minor version where you have deprecation but and minor feature, but it doesn't, it shouldn't doesn't break your code, and major versions where with our breakings and so on. Then the good thing of that is then for us since 2022, we begin to, to think roadmap and release and release cycle. And also in terms of version, uh, coin 3.1 is already ending as uh, coin 3.2 has been released, coin annotation has been released also. Um, coin 3.2 is uh, providing new DSL, new things. Don't have time today to talk about that, but it will be a pleasure next time to, to, uh, to share the incoming new feature of coin. In Q4, we are launching new releases for coin for Compose trying also to prepare a dedicated project for coin and Jetpack Compose, Desktop Compose, and everything around. And then, yeah, if you are still an unlucky uh, user, uh, let's say you are still in coin 2.x, then please migrate because you have at least two years, uh, you are two years late and there's lots of updates and fixes and everything Then you need to migrate uh, right now because uh, the current support in the community is uh, for uh, coin 3.x, not coin 2.x that is now too old. If you want to play with coin, the latest version is 3.2.0. And all of this is an amazing uh, adventure with all the open source project and its community and lots of people contributed to this. And I really, really thankful for them. Finally, with all the people, all the company that are using coin and especially with, with mobile application where you, we, you are betting on a framework that is making your backbone application, your structure and everything. 
you need a, a company, you need a real company to back up uh, behind that. This is why with some people, we are launching Codezilla. It's a company that is uh, providing um, uh, consulting and uh, services for coin and then helping you uh, for, your, for your business and development uh, with coin. Feel free to contact us on the Codezilla and also the blog of Codzilla is now the main point uh, for a new article about coin. Then if you want to hear about coin framework news, every, everything, then it's on blog.codzilla.io. And then I'm, I'm done. Thank you very much for, for listening. Mm -hmm.